Next, I'm going to share something that Molly and I created. And I want Dr. Newman to stay up here to keep me honest and uh, make sure that I don't misstate uh, things clinically and medically. Over the past 10 years, I've heard many stories from people who've lived through the experience of losing vision to LHON. It's never an easy time in someone's life, nor those who love and support them. But sometimes it's more traumatic than others. Obviously, I hope that no person carrying an LHON mutation who has not yet lost vision ever does. But unfortunately, some will. And I offer the following checklist for LHON carriers in hopes that it can help some of you here today and some who watch this video in the future to better prepare you for onset just in case. If you spend a bit of time preparing now and live your life never needing to use this, that's great. And if one day you or a loved one do unfortunately experience sudden onset vision loss, I hope this checklist and your taking action now to prepare will make your experience a bit smoother and perhaps with a better ultimate outcome, either in how much vision you preserve, how you adapt to the vision change, how the experience feels, or all of the above. So I'm going to present some material in a PowerPoint that I prepared a little bit ago. And um, also, we have a handout coming around now where this PowerPoint of a lot of words and a lot of slides has been summarized onto a simple one-page checklist for LHON carriers. So everything that I'm about to talk about in this PowerPoint is on this one checklist. And hopefully, you and your maternal relatives will learn about this checklist and can use it. So the first issue, which has been covered in other presentations, but since be, this may be on a video that some folks may not have seen the other, so you, you in the room, please forgive me if I, if I repeat what you've heard. Um, but again, what the first question is, who is an at-risk LHON carrier? Everyone on the maternal bloodline of an individual with genetic confirmation of an LHON mutation will carry the same mutation. So if the person who is affected is 11778, everyone on the bloodline will have the same mutation. Now, of course, not all who carry an LHON mutation will become affected, lose vision. In fact, most will not. But again, this is about being prepared. And so the chart that is um, here, so, um, so again, if, if, if this is, uh, this, there's a red box here, uh, meaning a male who has an LHON mutation. And the red is indicating carries the mutation. So nobody descending from the man with a mutation is, carries the mutation. And here we have a woman who carries an LHON mutation, and she passes it to all of her children. And then this is indicating a woman passes it to the, her males, females, males, females, and this female passes it to her children, boys and girls. So again, mothers pass the mutation to all children. So that's what this is about, preparing, um, doing a, a carrier checklist for anyone who's an at-risk LHON carrier. One of my favorite questions these days is, well, can women become affected? And over the years, there's been some confusion over whether women can become affected. And people in this room know women can become affected. Not everyone else does. But it's important uh, for people to understand that about 25% of all of those who are affected are females. And so it's important um, that anyone on the maternal bloodline, male or female, follow the, um, the guidelines on this checklist. What about age? There's been some talk over the years of a safe age. If you're over some age, you don't need to worry anymore. There are some folks in this room who've been affected in their 60s and 70s who will tell you there is no safe age. So again, this checklist applies no matter gender, no matter age. If you carry this mutation, it would be wise to be prepared at any time. Now you have different risk at different age, different risk by different gender, but again, if you carry the mutation, just be prepared. <laughs> so why do I keep saying this, be prepared? The answer is because I talk to people when it's happened. And y you guys know, the people in this room know, onset happens really quickly 
and there are so many issues to address. There's so many obstacles to overcome all at once. It's really overwhelming. And that's not the time to do the things I'm about to talk about. I talk to a lot of folks who haven't done these things, but I'm asking you to, to have your maternal relatives do them in advance. It will make onset less traumatic if it happens. And again, let's hope it doesn't happen, but again, please be prepared if, if, um, if you are a loved one carrying an LH1 mutation. So what's the first thing to do? Find an LH1 doctor. Sounds really simple until you're looking for one. You want to identify um, a local neuro-ophthalmologist or an ophthalmologist, and you want them to be able to see you in an emergency. And seeing some of these doctors, you guys are, <laughs> you're busy and you're hard to see. And it's easier to get in to see you if we've gotten to see you before we need you. So find one um, in advance. And also, um, you might want to have two. Because maybe you want to have an LHON expert uh, on your team. So maybe you want to have somebody local and an expert. Now, how do you find uh, an ophthalmologist or a neuro-ophthalmologist who can support you locally? Well, there, the group uh, called NANOS, um, North American Neuro-Ophthalmology Society, has a website, nanosweb.org, and they have a, um, a doctor locator feature on there. So if you're looking for someone in your area, you can go to this locator and you'll find um, lists of ophthalmologists um, and neuro-ophthalmologists interested um, in, in, neuro in neuro-ophthalmology. And I encourage you to contact them, uh, confirm they're on your insurance plan, um, get established as a patient, and explain that you carry an LHON mutation and make sure that they're willing to see you on an emergency basis if needed. I'd also encourage you to think about uh, whether you want to have a connection with uh, an LHON expert. Because even if you have someone locally who, who knows some of the basics, there are people who know more than others. Uh, in the US, Dr. Nancy Newman, Dr. Alfredo Sadoon, and in Canada, Canada Dr. Rustam Kranja. These are folks in North America who were fortunate to have as highly uh, expert individuals. Find out if they're on your insurance plan. Consider seeing them once as a carrier, just so you're an established patient. And again, this will expedite uh, if you do need them in emergency. And again, hopefully you don't, but if you do, um, be prepared. Um, and there's also the added benefit that if you've become a patient as a carrier and you have a, a question, um, uh, if you have a question about some other drug you might need to take or some other thing happening in your general health and you wonder if there's some connection or something you need to know about how it interacts with LHON, it might be helpful to, to know these folks um, and to be a patient. So you've got, uh, you've got your doctor or doctors, then what? Well, tomorrow we're going to talk about these exams a little bit more, but um, it's helpful to know what your normal is and that's doing a baseline exam. So if, if you do start having vision loss and you want to compare, um, you, want to, you want to have a baseline exam of a um, visual field test and an OCT, um, and you want to get that baseline and obtain a copy of the results. Um, you don't want to be scrambling for your re baseline results when vision loss happens. So I encourage you to maintain your baseline information in a paper or electronic file. You might change doctors, your doctor might move or retire. You don't want to be scrambling looking for these documents. If you've had genetic testing, I encourage you to store the results with your other LHON medical records. Um, if you don't have a copy of your, gen like maybe you got tested 10 years ago, um, but you don't have a copy of the results well, now's the time to go back and get a copy of those results because your doctor may retire, the, they may change practices, whatever. But if you have a copy of those results, then when you call me one day and say you want to get into a clinical trial and I say, which mutation do you have? And you go, I don't know. Well, it's better if you, if you have a copy of the results. Um, locating counseling services. Genetic counselors are very well equipped at discussing issues around genetics with you, and maybe even a mental health therapist, where would you turn? Because if you need uh, those resources, 
um, that's, that's helpful to know. Um, and I wanted to point out that to find a genetic counselor, the National Society of Genetic Counselors, NSGC.org, um, has a, a, a locator so you can find a genetic counselor in your area. Um, as I mentioned earlier, since everyone on the maternal bloodline carries the same LHON mutation, having genetic test results of one person can let everyone um, on the bloodline know theirs. Um, so what I'm not saying here that you need to get genetic testing done if you're a carrier. I'm just saying know your mutation. Um, and the reason why, again, is, is it could determine uh, whether you would be eligible for a clinical trial. Um, and it might also um, help you get your um, uh, sense of a potential outcome because each mutation is slightly different. So how do you know your LHON mutation? You might choose to get your own testing done, but some people choose not to do that. Well, then ask your maternal relative which mutation they have. Put that in your file. And then if you haven't had genetic testing done, develop a plan now for how you'll get it done quickly if you need it. Because if you want to get into a clinical trial, you'll need to know. Um, and there are ways to get it done, and there are multiple ways to get it done. One thing I want everyone in this group to really be aware of is there's a kind of genetic test that's a targeted mutation analysis. And what that does is it tests just for your family's specific mutation. Why do I want you to know about it? Because it can save you time and it can save you money. Uh, there are folks who, when they're first getting their um, LHON test done and it's testing for the, the primary mutations, and that has a certain price, but um, if you already know which mutation your family has, then they can test just for that one, and it's significantly less expensive. So um, how do you make that happen? If you obtain a copy of a maternal relative's genetic test results and store it with yours, then when you um, get the testing done, um, they can go for that mutation. Um, you also want to evaluate your lab options um, because each lab is different. Um, and uh, there are cost issues. It could be what your insurance might cover. It might be the lab's financial assistance options. Um, and it could be time. Turnaround uh, times can vary widely. And also how the sample is obtained. Um, in some situations, uh, a lab will um, FedEx you a kit for a, a swab and you just FedEx it back. Others, you go to a clinic for a blood draw. You might have a preference. Um, and then identify who will you have order the test. It could be the local neuro-ophthalmologist that you've identified based earlier on the checklist. It could be the LHON expert you've identified. It could be your primary care physician. could be a genetic counselor. But if you become knowledgeable and aware of which way you want to go based on the issues raised earlier, because each of these folks, your, your doctor can order it, but they may not understand it. So the more that you can guide them to the right um, direction, that would be helpful. Um, in terms of clinical trials, you may want to, um, if someone does become affected, you may want to uh, find out if there are any clinical trials. You might want to know how to find them. Uh, www.clinicaltrials.gov keeps uh, lists of what's available and then patient advocacy organizations, whether it's LHON.org or you know, the UMDF's LHON page. And understand that there are criteria that allow people into various trials. There's inclusion and exclusion criteria based on which mutation you have, how long it's been since you had onset, um, your age, et cetera. So these are just factors uh, that, that come into play. Um, and of course, be aware of environmental factors. Uh, the number one message is don't smoke. Uh, and then uh, there's more information about potential areas of concern that we'll talk more about tomorrow. Um, uh, and then, then the question is, well, what happens if you ex is suspect uh, onset is happening? Um, my, what I've uh, heard said is that, okay, if, if your vision is suddenly um, blurrier or cloudier, um, one way to find out is you're trying to find out is I have a picture here of a normal picture and then I have a picture where there's this real 
really small blurry spot in the middle now if you're in a fit if you're in a we're carrier you might catch it when it's just a little spot in the middle a lot of folks if you're the first in your family there might be a lot of vision loss before you even figure out what you've got but this group of people you're all aware and now that you're aware and you have some vision issues in a maternal relative you're going to catch that little spot more than other people are now if you're um, what do you do you know you're, you're a carrier you're hypersensitive you're, you're hyper aware you, you, you want to be hyper aware but not over aware how do you what do you do well um, one thing you can do is evaluate each eye individually because usually it onsets in one eye uh, than the other so if you look straight ahead with both eyes and then you close one eye and look straight ahead and then you close the other eye and look straight ahead and if you see that small blur in one side and not the other that's that's not a good sign um, and that blurry spot is called the scotoma and the likely course of events is it will get larger and larger and it's not a floater. It's not like a little speck of dust moving across your vision that's gone. I'm talking about something that you look with one eye and there's a blur, and then you look in the next hour and it's still there and it's still there. That's, that's where you really wanna be concerned. And at that point, you wanna you know, visit one of your LHON doctors immediately if you can, and that's why you've done all this stuff, because you now have a doctor and you know where you're going and you get in there immediately and then they evaluate um, whether you have onset or not. Hopefully they can rule it out and if not, they can guide you forward. Have I said anything, Dr. Newman, that needs to be adjusted? <laughs> the only thing I would point out is that when you go on, if you go on www.clinicaltrials.gov, um, just because a trial is listed there does not mean it is uh, approved of in some way by the NIH or the government or whatever. You can get anything on there that you want. Um, anybody can. And so I'm mentioning that because there are things out there like s supposedly stem cell injections and trials like that that are happening lots of places, including in the United States, that really are not, do not have a scientific basis and they prey on people who are hopeless. So I, just because it's there on the website does not mean it's necessarily a valid trial. Um, I would trust Lissa and her website.